all right welcome back class to the next topic that i am going to discuss to you know uh, this is this will be in a form of lecture so this topic will serve as our um, second discussion so we started with the uh, settings of the philippines during the time of rizal now we will proceed to chapter one up to chapter four all right so for the chapter one it talks about the advent of a national hero when we talk about advent it is the coming no? this is the uh, the arrival of an, uh, an important person so uh, it can be understood that Rizal you now as we as we know him in our history that he's, he is our national hero um, that by virtue of his uh, great contributions um, great ideals and uh, his uh, work of awakening the spirit of patriotism in the hearts of the Filipinos. So this is Rizal. No? He is a man of multiple profession. Um, as we know that Rizal has that kind of... Uh, um, um, he was showing in his early years... Um, interest in learning so many things so probably that is the reason why as you can see in the screen these are all these are all his uh, profession um kumbaga yahag yung gi ano yahag yung gi paningkumutan that he will he would become an expert to these matters no he was a physician because he was able to to uh the finishing of talmology no i guess it was in europe uh, we will know that later on as we proceed to to uh, the life of Rizal. So, he was also a poet in his early years. He was already able to produce some poems. Now, dramatist, uh, atheist, novelist, novelist, of course, the famous no, Limitang Here and El Filibus Terismo. He's a historian, architect, painter, sculptor, educator, linguist, musician, naturalist because he also loved nature. Uh, ethnologist, surveyor, engineer, farmer, businessman. Businessman, I guess it is associated to to his uncle, no? uh, Jose uh, Alberto, who, who who was a who was a businessman. Economist, geographer, geographer, cartographer, bibliophile, philologist, grammarian, folklorist, philosopher, translator, inventor, magician, humorist, satirist. Uh, satirist, you know this one. A uh, polemicist, a sportsman, traveler, and a prophet. A prophet probably because in in his early years, um, he had already a prophet. Now when his mother was imprisoned unjustly, na preso ng walay masihanan ang akusasyon before the court, so he predicted. No, he predicted the the uh, the uh, release of his mother, and it came true. Now, Rizal was our political hero and was also a martyr. martyr. Uh, that is because uh, he was executed in the name of the Philippines' independence. Um, it was, you know, it was the act of the Spaniards to suppress the possible influence of Rizal to to uh, the uh, possible, I don't know, the possible revolution that he might cause. Uh, he inspired Bonifacio. He inspired uh, many educators or uh, professions like, uh, uh, um, you know, the members of La Solidaridad. We will know that also later on. So he was born in, on June 19, 1861 in Calamba, Laguna. Uh, June 19, 1861, in Calamba, Laguna, and then he was the seventh children of Francisco Mercado, uh, Francisco Mercado Rizal. You know, um, the, the the last name Rizal was already an adaptation. No? It was an uh, um, additional name. Actually, the original last name was Mercado, but uh, due to Rizal's admission to to uh to Ateneo it was changed no he he brought the name Rizal instead of Mercado now the reason behind was Pasiano uh, Pasiano was closely associated to Father Borgos was a member of Gomborza so that is why 
um, the last name Mercado um, was despised by the Spaniards. No? That's why Rizal. Um, he was baptized in, he, his father is Francisco Mercado and uh, his mother is Teodora Alonso uh, Realonda. No? He was baptized in the Catholic Church and during this time, the Governor General was uh, Jose Lemere, no? morning Gobernador uh, General during uh, his birth. And during 1865, he was around uh, four years old to six years old this, by this time, uh, probably three years old. No, um, His mother taught him how to read and write. And at the age of three, no? uh, by the age of three, we are still learning how to walk, I guess, and talk. Uh, probably we know how to ra to to walk and talk already, but uh, it was not yet in our mind, diba? But this time, Rizal at the age of three, um, he already mastered and learned the alphabet uh, taught by his mother. As he described, his mother is very fluent, no? Not only in Tagalog, but also in Spanish, and as well as Latin. So these are the, the siblings of Rizal. Um, they are 11. So... Their family is composed of 13 members, so 11 siblings and uh, the parents, so that's uh, 13. So siblings of Rizal, the oldest was Saturnina, which was, uh, whose nickname was Neneng. Um, Pashano is older brother. Pashano is the only brother of Rizal. No? He was the confidant of Rizal. He acted as the second father, uh, especially during his education. No? Um, it was Pashano who accompanied him all along. After the execution of Rizal, he joined the Philippine Revolution as a combat general. Only, only brother, uh, yes, as I said, second father to Rizal. Um, Rizal portrayed uh, Pashano in his novel Noli Mitangheri as wise philosopho Tasho. Um, next was Narcisa. Nicknamed Sia, a teacher, then Olympia, nicknamed uh, uh, Ipia, then Lasha, then Maria, a nickname Biang. Uh, after Maria was Rizal, he was the uh, this, the uh, seventh. Then his younger sister Concepcion, nicknamed Concha, uh, he, he she died in the age of three. No, it was the first sorrow of Rizal. No, since uh, since uh, be, since. Uh, uh, it was the first sorrow of Rizal. It was the first time he cried as a young boy. The next conception was Trinidad, who nicknamed Trining. Soledad, the youngest, uh, nicknamed uh, Coling. All right. So for the ancestry of Rizal class, uh, um, he was a product of the mixture of races. Um, Negrito, Indonesian, Malay, Chinese, Japanese, and Spanish. So, kaning iyahang lahi nga Chinese, it was, I guess, from his grand grandmother or grand grandparents. Now, uh, mona siyang uh, kanipong lahi po nga Negrito, Indonesian, Malay, and Japanese. So, this blood was a uh, mixture of this, one of these uh, uh, races. So, his great great grandfather was a Chinese. Great great grandfather, maning mas uh, katong nauna pa sa apo sa tuhod, right? And then uh, um, uh, their family belongs to the principalia. It's the noble family. We have to note class that there are classes, no, or social classes uh, during that time in the Spaniards and uh, the Spanish regime. Um, first is the peninsulares, the peninsulares. They are the pure-blooded Spaniards born in Spain. Now, actually, uh, when, we, when we talk about peninsulares, peninsulares, it talks about those who was born or, or uh, born in Iberian Peninsula, and one of that is Spain. Now, insulares are the pure-blooded Spaniards born in the Philippines. So, the Philippines naman yung insulares. While the Spanish mestizo, one parent is Spanish, the other is a native, either uh, Spanish and uh, uh, Filipino or Spanish and uh, Chinese, that one. Um, Principalia, these are the wealthy, pure-blooded native. So, they belong 
ang family na Rizal. Uh, they are a family coming from a royal family, no? Katong mga uh, dato na to before, from kadatuan class. So, next is the Indio. Uh, they are the pure-blooded native or the Filipinos. Kanini mo naman sila, ang uh, wala po'y lahi sa royalty, katong mga dato, no? Then, last is the, the Chino and Fiel. They are the non-Catholic pure-blooded Chinese, no? So, morning tawag sa ilaha during that time. So, their family, the Rizal's family, was one of the distinguished families in Kalamba. They were religious and disciplined. So, that's why Rizal has, uh, you know, has a good upbringing. Kung baga, ika nga. Alright, let's go to Rizal's education. Um, for Rizal's education, um, he, he, when he, when he grew, when, uh, when he grew older, his parents acquired the private tutors. Now, one of them was Leon Monroy. Um, he was the classmate of the father of Rizal. And he was, uh, um, he gave, le uh, lessons, uh, uh, particularly the basics of Latin uh, at home as a preparation for his formal education. Um, other tutors, the first was Maestro Celestino, and the second was Maestro Lucas Padua. Lucas Padua. Alright, and then uh, his uncle also, no? um, his uncles also taught him something. Um, his uncle Manuel Alberto, uh, his mother's cousin, worried of his physical development, tungod kay niwang siya, no? and then pale, masakitin. So he taught him to develop the skills in swimming, uh, fencing, wrestling and other sports while his uncle jose you know, the brother of his mother taught him to love and admire the beauty of nature so on ilahang, ilahang contributions you know, of the uh, training of Rizal. then his uncle gregorio a scholar has instilled in him the love for education so they in the start and its importance the value of hard work to think for himself and to observe his surroundings carefully. Na ikaw nga sabi nila, if you just be attentive to to your surroundings and to anything, then everything will be your teacher. Because a lot of things has something to teach you. When his sister Conception died, due to his sadness, the parish priest then of Calamba was Father Leoncio Lopez. Help him understand the philosophy of life, no? the passing of life, the coming and the passing of life, the reality of life, that there is always death, no? that the company with it, and learn the value of scholarship and intellectual honesty. So when his tutor died, uh, it was Leon Monroy, his family decided to transfer him to a private school in Binyan, Laguna. So the Renag start ang yung formal education. So he was the the Binyan School of Laguna was then supervised by Maestro Justiniano Aquino Cruz. No? So um, he was the first a teacher of Rizal in the formal education. In his first day, he was asked if he knows Spanish and Latin, no? and then uh, he responded uh, a little. No? Um, his classmates, especially Pedro, the son of of uh, Maestro Hostiniano laughed at him. No? Murag uh, gibuli siya due to his knowledge, little knowledge about the languages of Latin and Spanish. At noon time, when their teacher was having siesta, Rizal challenged Pedro to a fight. No? So, isog po ni Rizal. So, at noon time, no? wala man ni siesta man ilahang maestro. So, he challenged Pedro, who bullied him to a fight. Uh, Pedro accepted the challenge, thinking that he can easily defeat, no, underestimating Rizal, that he can easily defeat Rizal. That's uh, accepted the challenge, thinking that he can defeat Rizal because Rizal was smaller than him and much younger. So they uh, resolved in the classroom. And uh, Rizal defeated the bigger boy because he was taught the art of wrestling. No? Remember mo during the time that he was taught um, wrestling by his uh, uncle Manuel, no? Alberto. So, 
um, he became popular among his class classmates uh, from when uh, by the time that he won the against uh, Pedro. So after the class in the afternoon, um, he was challenged by Andres, another classmate, to an arm wrestling. So since uh, he had a weaker arm, he lost and nearly cracked his head. So Osato has an experience, and in the in the succeeding days, he had ad- other fights. So actually, he was not quarrelsome by nature like uh, Palaaway. He is not like that. But he never ran away from a fight. So dili siya Palaaway, but kung hagiton siya di po siya matras. No, he beats all Binyan student in academic by surpassing them all in Spanish, Latin, and other subjects. He was the best student from that school in Binyan. All right, let's proceed. Um, there was an incident. No, it was on Gen- January 20, uh, 1872. Uh, this was the known uh, Cavite mutiny. So, uh, going against the I don't know the the uh, ruling um, leaders. So January 20, 1872, 200 uh, Filipino soldiers mutinied because of the abolition of their privileges. The privileges that they enjoyed before was the exemption from paying tributes and from rendering a, a forced labor or polo by the Governor General Rafael de Izguerdo. So Gen- Governor General Rafael de Izguerdo was was an, uh, a draconian, uh, I mean, he, he uh, ruled the Philippines uh, with an iron fist, no? a draconian um, approach. No? Stricto kayo, a traditional and orthodoxy, authoritative and orthodoxy type of leadership. So bag open siya this time. Uh, when he came, that's why he abolished the privileges enjoyed by the Filipino soldiers. This includes the mestizos. No? Uh, Fathers Jose Borgos, Mariano Gomez, and Jacinto Zamora, pioneering the secularization movement, was accused and implicated. Uh, they were actually, you know, um, if you are against the government, especially these uh, three priests, they are not particular, particularly um, against on on the uh, um, the fight for revolution. You know, the fight for the revolution was was for. Uh, Philippine independence. Kining ilahang secularization of of the ano you know, of uh, the parishes. It was actually the fight of the uh, Filipino priests against the Spanish priests towards equality and uh, and justice. You know what? Even though you're a priest back then, you are not treated as equal to the foreign priests, no? mga Spaniards, mga paring uh, uh, Spaniol. Um, they are not allowed, they were not allowed to to uh, administer or to to hold the parishes. No? Di sila pwedeng mo, mo mahimong parish priests. Di sila pa, mahimong mo lead of parish. They are instead um, um, uh, assigned to a lower posts, no? usually katurang mga kuan, assistant, um, probably, um, you know, daghan ka yung mga lower positions nga aside sa ano, aside sa parish priest. So, dili sila pwede mo rule. That's why they are f- fighting for secularization. Na sila matagaan po sila og equality that they can handle uh, parish priests. No, I mean, parishes. So, tungod sa ilang bold and, uh, 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 you know, and the brave uh, fight no for secularization, I guess uh, it was actually influenced by some uh, uh, sp- Spanish priests, no? mga sip-sip sa, sa mga politiko, that uh, they they uh, they were ano they were uh, uh, suspected as behind the Cavite mutiny, no? kay uh, tungod sa ilang fight. So sila mo gidamay, sila mo gipasanginlan. So they were executed in February 17, 1872, despite that. Uh, the Archbishop of Manila appealed no to uh, to show clemency, but uh, to no avail. Still, it was not heard, and they were executed. So, knowing that uh, the the uh, execution, Pasano was a close friend of uh, Burgos, no, his teacher and a close friend. 
He quit his studies because he was enraged by the death of his mentor, Father Burgos. So their martyrdom inspired Rizal to fight the evils of the Spanish tyranny and redeem the oppressed people. Now, kung atong i-relate no, um, to our social status right now, Rizal witnessed, no, even his brother witne witnessed the execution of the three priests. The uh, accusation was biased, partial, and unfounded, baseless. Um, according to some reports or accounts, it was there was actually a gossip, no? there was a chismish that uh, circulating around, and also there are stories invented no? to implicate the three priests. But if we are going to to uh, to uh, to uh, apply that in our justice system today, it will be insufficient. It will not be enough. No? So what about today? There are so many killed no, without due process, what we call the extrajudicial killings. But when we talk extrajudicial killings, it is actually an inappropriate word. Why? Because we, in the first place, we don't have judicial killings. When we talk about judicial killings, that is um, death penalty. We don't have death penalty or capital punishment. So... Kung doon natin capital punishment or uh, death penalty that is judicial killing, so makaingon ta kakatong dipatay outside the law, then that is extrajudicial killings. But still we have no kuan, so that's why AJK is inappropriate, but still we don't have any other terms no, nga pwedeng mafit, so that's why we call it extrajudicial killings. There are so many drug addicts who already um, responded no, and uh, I followed the process of the Tokhang, but still killed later on. There are so many who, are, who already tried to change themselves, but still killed. In the province of Negros Oriental alone, there are so many killings from 2016 up to now, up to present. That I guess, especially those political figures, that until now is not resolved. Why do we? Why we don't have, or don't we have, such kind of uh, understanding as Rizal, that there was a trial, no? Do na ganit ni trial ni ilahang tulo, but the trial was partial, unfounded and baseless. But still, there was a trial, no? At least na trial ko nuhay. But actually, it's the same. Eh? Rizal fight, no? Uh, ought to fight the evils of the Spanish tyranny. But now, in our hearts, we just let it be. We just let it go. We don't even have any feeling or emotion of trying to fight for peaceful, for a peaceful community, no? for for a good and the fair justice system. I guess we're gonna do that only. We will clamor only for justice if it it only uh, happened in our family. Buyag palayo. No? So hopefully we will have this kind of quana uh, result. So one of the uh, um, another injustice that Rizal saw himself, no, and he experienced himself. That's why lalum uh, lalum ning Rizal. So it was the injustice done to his mother. On June 1872, Theodora's brother Jose Alberto, mani si Jose Alberto mo ni ni Rizal no? to to uh, admire and to love the beauty nature no? um, he returned from a business trip so during his absence his wife abandoned their house and their children kining uh, uncle ni Jose Rizal doon ay asawa katong paglakaw ni Jose ang iyong asawa iyang giabandonar ang iyong balay ang iyong mga anak she was found having an affair with his with the Spanish lieutenant of the Guardia Civil this Guardia Civil is not named, no? but uh, duna siya uh, relasyon. It was one. It was found duna evidence or proof. Jose planned to divorce her, but that uh, Eudora persuaded to forgive his wife to avert the scandal. Para dili na mulala ang scandalo, um, Eudora uh, tried to convince Riz Jose no, not to continue the divorce because divorce was a, a is a is a scandal in in nature back then. Um, 
through uh, Chedora's advice or uh, um, persuasion, Jose listened and the trouble was settled. It was already okay. But then, the wife of Jose was not yet done. He, with his uh, connivance and the, uh, you know, affair of the lieutenant, uh, nagsabot sila, no? Filed a case in court accusing Jose Alberto and Teodora of attempting to poison her. So, it happened niya kung asa nagikan kining kuan, asa nagikan ang kasukuan ng Guardia Civil sa kuan, sa Pamilya Rizal, it happened that the lieutenant had grudge doon ay pagdumot kang niya Don Francisco for refusing to give him a father. May nga tag father. Mau ni siya ang uh, kuan kas, mau ni siya ang pagkaon sa kabayo ng no? father to his horse. So, kaya wapan siya taga eh, nagdumot siya, avenge himself by arresting Teodora with the help of Calamba's Gobernador Silio Antonio Vivencio del Rosario. Morning uh, Gobernador Silio back then. Teodora was forced to walk from Calamba to Santa Cruz for 50 kilometers. No morning, dala siya dito para dito sa prisohon. Upon arrival, she was in prison. 50 kilometers, you are going to walk from Dumaguete to Shaton. Ning anak kalay on class. I do not know if kaya na to. Ano? Although kaya mo tingali na to, but uh, it's very tiring and exhausting. This is the. Uh, um, okay. Um, she was acquitted, as I said earlier, she was acquitted only after two years, more than two years, two and a half years. No? Uh, when, uh, when he was studying in Binyan, when he went home, uh, he visited his mother no? to the, in the prison, and then uh, he told his mother his achievements in Binyan because he was the best student from there, and his mother was very happy. And then he told his mother about his uh, about the the about his interpretation because his mother told him ni share ang iyang mama sa iya ha sa usakadamgo and Rizal interpreted the dream uh, that he will that she will no? she will be released uh, in three months time no Itong, uh, probably uh, more than two years na siya two years and a half more than two years tong pag uh, pag visit ni Rizal no sa Santa Cruz. He interpret niya yung damgos yung mama and then he's, he said that uh, in his interpretation that she will be released in three months time. So after three months time, it came true. No? Uh, it was then realized by his mother that it was a, a true interpretation and he, uh, she actually um, 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 uh, compared result to Jose no? in the Bible who was a uh, dream interpreter. So, then, uh, in that incident, Rizal uh, wrote um, a memoir. No? Our mother was uh, unjustly snatched from us. And by whom? By some men who had been our friends and whom we treated as honored guests. Kay kanima go si Gobernador Silio and the Guardia Civil. They were guests of the family of Rizal. They were welcomed warmly and accommodated warmly. And how come? No, they can be like that, by some men who had been our friends, and whom we treated as honored guests. We learned later that our mother got sick, far from us, and at an advanced age. My mother was defended by Messrs. She finally succeeded to be acquitted and vindicated in the eyes of her judges, accusers, and even her enemies. But after how long? After two and a half years, so that was the memoir of Rizal on that incident. Now he was, uh, their family was betrayed by friends that they treated that they treated to be their friends, but uh, by that uh, simple incident, no, ganitabang ronta si Jodora to resolve their marriage, and then as well as kamay ra kaya ng rason ng wag ratagay yung father pagkaon sing kabayo, nasuko pagayo and then it. You know, it led to this kind of injustice. Alright, let's end from here, class. No? Uh, this will be the entire topic for our uh, second meeting discussion. And hopefully, you have uh, learned and you have uh, taken down notes from this incident, so this events in the early life of Rizal. Because uh, we, I will be giving uh, an assessment from this. 
So it's very important for you to take down notes again I, as, I, as I keep on reminding you. For now, we'll stop from here and hopefully you're, you're fine and you take care. Keep safe everyone.